Real Country 1430 AM and 107.3 FM WRDN. I'm Brian Winnikins. Joining us this afternoon, Pepper County Health Officer Heidi Stewart. We're going to get an update on uh, the COVID-19. And uh, uh, Heidi, thank you for joining us today. Well, we're doing in the for our YouTube channel, we're also doing this a little bit different. We're going to be going through a, a little bit of a presentation as well with uh, Heidi on uh, what's being presented at the uh, Pepin County Board meeting and, and the Health uh, Committee meeting as well. And uh, so Heidi, thank you for joining us. Well, first, let's get a uh, update on our case numbers. I know we've seen a little bit of a spike uh, recently, haven't we? Yeah, so I'll start a little bit showing, um, and if you're looking at the screen and you're watching it, you'll see here um, on the screen that the case numbers uh, a month ago when I presented to the Board of Health were, were a bit worse in Wisconsin, Michigan, and Minnesota. As we look at the numbers now, um, it appears as though even a couple of the counties in the state of Wisconsin are in the green uh, based on those Harvard metrics, which we've been talking about for over a year now. Um, we're in the next step up from that, which is the yellow. So that's, that's pretty good. That's um, a fairly low uh, case per day, um, per seven day average number. Um, another thing that we can look at is our numbers over time. And uh, starting back in really where, where we saw the first peak was back in um, July of last year. So we're almost a whole year out. We had a high, high number of cases um, in November, December, things started to uh, fall down a little bit in January, February, March, we had, um, I believe, 10 cases total in March. Don't mark my words on that one, but I'm pretty sure um, that's where we were at. April, we tripled that. We were back up a little bit because of a outbreak we had there. And then so far for May, we're averaging about one case per day. So uh, the next slide here can show you that. And um, we're at a total of 857 positive cases total. Um, we do have some significant testing happening um, on a daily basis. Um, over the weekend, it drops down to only maybe, uh, well, sometimes zero, sometimes one person tested. Um, and then we can have a day where we have six, two, um, so on average, we have between three and five people tested per day. Um, if you're looking at this slide with me, you'll see on the 30th of April, we had 44 people tested. And that was uh, something that the Duran School District tried out. It's called pool testing. And I'll get to that in a little bit. Um, we didn't have any positives come out of that. Uh, as we're looking at numbers today and, and over the last several months, one of the important things to point out is that the vaccines are working um, in preventing hospitalizations and in preventing deaths, as well as um, some illnesses uh, for some individuals. So we're definitely seeing the benefits of, of uh, especially that 65 plus population that we were seeing the most hospitalizations and deaths with. Um, we're not seeing that anymore. So our death count hasn't changed since January um, and our hospitalization count hasn't changed in over a month. So that's uh, good news. I talked about testing a little bit. If you are in, interested in getting tested and, and can't find a provider, certainly call the health department. We can figure out how to get you tested. Advent Health continues to be an excellent partner in testing their turnaround time is same day. Uh, sometimes um, it's within a half an hour. So it's, it's a really awesome benefit that we have here locally. Uh, there are some things being offered to schools right now. It's the antigen testing. And if you're looking at the screen, you would see a picture of something that looks kind of like a pregnancy test. And these are those at-home tests uh, that people can do uh, it, that would be similar to what they're proposing to have done in the schools. And really antigen testing, in my opinion, and in the opinion of those at the state of Wisconsin, um, it's really a screening. It's not a definitive. We're not going to use that information to make any public health choices as far as um, in public health interventions, public health exclusions, uh, public health surveillance. It's really a screening. Those people need to follow up um, for uh, with PCR testing, which I would suggest you go locally here. It's a quick turnaround, like I mentioned. I mentioned the prom pool testing. Well, what is a pool test? On the screen here, 
Um, and, and in general, uh, for those that don't have a screen, if we had uh, a group of 30 people to test, we would break those, pe those, those people up into groups of three. So we would have group one, group two, and group three. We would all have them do their swab, uh, their nasal swab. Those would all be combined in one test and run one PCR test on all of those uh, specimens. If the whole group comes back negative, then everybody in that group was negative. If the whole group comes back positive, then they're gonna rerun that specimen separately and determine who that positive person or who those positive people were within that group. So it really cuts down on the amount of testing um, that's needed, the testing um, supplies that are needed. Uh, and it, it, it cuts down quite a bit on cost. So this is a strategy that I, I know was, um, went very well uh, with one of our local schools. They, they're interested in doing this again in the fall if this becomes an option. Um, and this might be something we see as far as um, testing large groups of people as, as we move forward. Vaccinations. Um, Moderna vaccine has been available, is available, and the health department is taking appointments for that. We've given the most. That's why that uh, picture of the Moderna vaccine on the screen is the largest. We also have Johnson & Johnson available. We did take a pause with that when the rest of the state and the nation took a pause with it. And, and when we were given the thumbs up to go ahead and restart it, we did that as well. We are getting special allotments in of the Pfizer um, for specifically school age populations. So we um, have completed the first and the second dose of the Pfizer vaccine for the six the 16 and 17 year old population um, in Pepin County. We are ordering vaccine for next week for the 12 to 15 year old population. Um, Pfizer has been approved by the FDA after much testing uh, that it can be given to the 12 to 15 year old population. Um, today at noon, the ACIP met the um, um, the Committee on Information, uh, immun sorry, the Committee on Immunization Practices, they are the ones that decide uh, the clinical guidelines related to the vaccine. And once those clinical guidelines come out from the ACIP, DHS is ready to give us the green light as long as there's not huge changes in the way we have to handle the vaccine or the way we have to do things with that. So uh, we are ready. We're ready to send the school letters out. Um, hopefully at the end of this week, and we have um, plans to be in schools next week to do those um, 12 to 15 year olds. Vaccination rates in Wisconsin. Um, the state of Wisconsin is at 44.6% of the eligible population being vaccinated. With, uh, Pepin County is at 39.6% of the eligible population vaccinated. That's 2,889 individuals. I know we're doing more today. So hopefully we can get that number over 3,000 very soon. Um, we do have close to 75% of our 65 plus population vaccinated. Um, and like I said, we're seeing the benefits of that with the decrease in hospitalization and uh, no deaths since the beginning, since, the, since uh, January of this year. Talking with Heidi Stewart, a Pepin County Health Officer uh, this afternoon. Heidi, I know that um, the, the there's the demand for the vaccines going down. Part of it is because people are getting vaccinated. So, you know, OK, I, I don't have to go three times a week to do this. But there's also a lot of hesitancy. And what for those that are, are hesitant to do this, what what suggestions would you give them to to be able to get the proper information, because I mean, Dr. Facebook is not the place to go. Let's let's not kid ourselves. So what should they do? Because there are some folks that have some, they are a little bit concerned, and, and, and I respect that. Certainly, and, and, and everybody has, has to do their own due diligence as far as making their own medical decisions. Um, I think you hit it right on the head. We need to make sure that we're getting information from credible sources. Um, so Facebook, or the general internet may not be the best place to be getting that information. I would suggest that if you have a medical provider that you trust that you've been with for a significant amount of time, you reach out to that medical provider. Um, later this week, you will be seeing a joint letter from all of the health officers 
uh, and many healthcare systems within the state of, uh, within the Western region of Wisconsin coming out, encouraging people to get vaccinated. Um, Mayo, Marshfield, Advent Health, Prevea, uh, Gunderson, all of those big name um, facilities are in support of people getting vaccinated. So like I said at the beginning, this is, an, this is a personal decision I think we're seeing the drop off for a, uh, and, and a, a sense of less demand right now Number for a couple of reasons. One, our supply is much more adequate to meet the demand than it, than it was uh, a couple months ago. Two, the individuals in that 65 plus age group, the individuals working in healthcare were, were, were frightened and they felt a need to get that vaccine immediately. Now we're working with a population that um, maybe doesn't have the same level of fear that the other uh, cohorts as, the, as it rolled out did. Um, you know, they're, they're working. So we need to look at making it more convenient for them. We need to work on things like taking it to employers so that it can be done on the job. Uh, faith-based organizations. We had a request today from a civic group to come Memorial Day weekend because they plan on being really busy. Um, we've taken it to some different housing facilities. We're taking it to our jail inmates when they're booked in. Um, we're going away from that mass clinic of 400 people and, and really doing um, small handfuls here and there. It's, it's not as efficient and it doesn't happen as quickly, but it still, it still does happen. Um, I know that a partner to the south of us this weekend set up a station at the 100 mile uh, garage sale in Nelson and actually vaccinated over 75 people at that event. Um, I'm pleasantly surprised at that result. Um, uh, it's about convenience to the group that we're trying to reach at this point. So uh, we're looking at ways locally here how we can meet, meet those needs and, and um, provide that service. Talking with uh, Pepin County Health Officer uh, Heidi Stewart uh, this afternoon about the COVID-19 uh, update as well. And uh, the contact tra tracing and, and some of that, um, that is also continuing, Heidi? That is, and during the last outbreak we had, um, we actually had some people surprised that, you know, the quarantine and the isolation uh, we're still a thing. They are still a thing. We are still doing it. It is still important. There, there is still a large number of individuals who have yet to be vaccinated. Until we can get that vaccine to them and offer protection to those that haven't had that opportunity yet, um, it remains important for us to take those mitigation practices, which include the isolation and quarantine. Um, they include the physical distancing. They include the mask wearing. So um, I think that if the ACIP and the DHS approve the vaccine down to 12 year olds, we're taking another big step towards getting uh, towards herd immunity and towards moving where we can start looking at things like making this an endemic instead of a pandemic. So. Uh, for those of you that have the slides, you'll see I have a little definition up about uh, endemic, epidemic, and pandemic. Uh, a pandemic is when we have widespread outbreak across several continents um, worldwide, and that's where we're still at now. We hear about outbreaks in India and some of the uh, adverse effects that they're having there. An endemic is, is what we have uh, now with some of our other vaccine preventable diseases, such as uh, pertussis and whooping cough, small outbreaks pop up scattered across um, the, the US, the world. Um, case numbers relatively remain, remain constant. There aren't huge spikes or waves. And the more that we can encourage people to do the mitigation practices and prevention, uh, we can move this more towards an endemic, which I think will feel more like normal life for all of us. Talking with Heidi Stewart uh, this afternoon. Heidi, finally, before we let you go, um, I, I, I guess, uh, you know, I have to ask, will, do, do you know where will, 
Will we be having to do boosters, you think? I mean, I've heard reports that there might be. And if, if that's the case, how would that be just a, another dose of what I, I received? I received the Pfizer. So, OK, would if I had to get a booster, is it just going to be another dose of that? Or do you know how some of that might work? Well, I can only make an assumption of how that will work, which is a dangerous thing to do, as, as we all know. Um, but as this virus mutates and changes, much like the influenza virus mutates and changes, we have to adjust the vaccine um, prevention to, to meet those changes. So if we compare it to influenza, it's possible it could be an annual thing. It's possible it could be included with the influenza vaccine down the road. I guess we'll all uh, wait and see and, and learn when that time comes. But I've used this example a couple times now. Um, for many years, we provided the pertussis vaccine when children were less than one, several doses. And then at five years, when they went back to school, we were providing that booster dose or four years or whenever they were going back to school, school age, we were providing that booster. That worked great for a long, long time. And then um, about 10 years ago, we started seeing outbreaks of pertussis happening again. And we were seeing it happen in vaccinated children. So studies were done to determine that um, the vaccine effectiveness waned over time. So we, we then implemented again a booster at 11 and 12 year olds for the pertussis vaccine. That's combined with the tetanus vaccine. So if vaccine can, can be combined and can be given at, at the times when it's needed to be given, uh, that, that's very possible. That's what we may see in the future where, you know, depending on how far out it is, uh, depending on we, what we learn about the effectiveness and how long it lasts, um, we'll all learn together. Heidi Stewart with Pepin County Health Departments. You're listening to WRDN.